On my journey from zero income to millionaire in a year and a half, I had a few key habits that were essential to me hitting my million dollar goal. These habits are ridiculously overpowered and basically break the game of life. And they're essentially super simple, but despite that, most people completely ignore them because most people act like most people. Everyone acts average. Everyone wants to do what everyone else is doing. And they never stop to think that if they continue to do what everyone else is doing, they're gonna continue to get the same result as everyone else is getting. So come into this with an open mind. It might be simple. It might seem too easy. But this is how I did it. This is, this is the way, okay? <laughs> Just, this is exactly, this is the exact formula. Here is my secret formula. I'm about to tell it to you. Listen really closely and don't you know, just give me the benefit of the doubt. Okay, I did make a million dollars in a year and a half. I literally sat there, zero income. I was on unemployment. I had a dollar in my hand. I was like, I'm gonna make a million dollars in a year. And a year and a half later, I had a million dollars. So call, call it what you want. Here's my secret formula. Habit number one is setting massive goals. Setting huge, insane, crazy goals at the outset of your journey is going to be the rocket fuel that gets you from where you're at to where you need to go. This is in stark contrast to literally everything everyone else will tell you. They'll tell you to pick a realistic goal. They'll tell you picking realistic goals is how you achieve your goals. And they'll tell you that as somebody who's never achieved their goals, as somebody who's always been average. You don't want to be average, so stop listening to average people. Let me show you how this works. So let's say my insane goal is I wanna knock everything over on my desk. So let's say my insane goal is I wanna make an extra $50,000 in the next 100 days. Some methods that could get me to my goal would be maybe flipping stuff, maybe doing sales, maybe doing wholesale real estate. Maybe I could do crypto trading, but just like put it all on margin and be insanely irresponsible and just leverage that thing to the moon. And I'm sure there's a whole bunch of other stuff that I could do, but the first thing I would do, I would come up with my insane goal, and then I would like write down a list of the different things that could get me to my insane goal. And you'll notice what's missing from this list. DoorDash is missing from this list. Uber is missing from this list. Things that would never get me to my goal. So immediately, boom, I just eliminated all the small, small things, the average things that would never actually get me to my insane goal. And now I'm focusing on these extraordinary things that could potentially get me to my goal. But let's say for the purpose of this video, I decide I'm gonna do sales. I've never done sales before, but I'm gonna do sales. Specifically, I'm gonna go door to door. I'm gonna knock on doors and I'm gonna sell pest control. And I got this from somebody who specifically did this and would make around $200,000 selling pest control from May to August. So I know this is an idea that would work for, for my goal, for my insane goal of making $50,000 in the next 100 days. And in this video, I'm gonna show you exactly what he did to make that $200,000 between May and August and how you could get set up with something like that too, if maybe that was something you were interested in. Anyways, the point of an insane goal is to give you a destination nation to go toward. Most people just wait for opportunities to fall in their lap. They think for whatever reason, this is the most ridiculous mindset on the planet, but this is like the mindset 99% of people have. They think for whatever reason, at some point in their life, somebody's just going to throw an opportunity in their lap and give them everything they want. And this is an ex absurd expectation that people have. This is not going to happen. Nobody is going to throw your dreams into your lap. That is not going to happen. You need to go out and seek out your dreams. You need to pick a destination and go toward it. But don't aim for the gutter. Aim for the moon. The best you're going to get if you aim for the gutter is the gutter, okay? The best you get if you aim for the moon is the moon. Pick an insane goal. Pick a goal that makes you want to leap out of bed every single morning and punch life in the face to just grab life by the horns, look it in the eyes and say, I own you, you crazy little animal. I'm going to dominate you day. I am going to be ridiculously successful. I am going to be ridiculously just amazing today and nothing's gonna stop me. You need a goal that, that's that big. Aim for the moon and you will land among the stars. And even if you don't land among the stars, okay? Oh my gosh, you're just gonna end up in the gutter. And that's where everyone else is aiming anyway. So what does it even matter, okay? You're just literally like, oh great, I, I failed, I'm average now. That's the worst outcome, okay? Whoa, like end of the world. That's what you would have been if you wouldn't aim for the moon anyway. So if my goal is $50,000 in the next 100 days, the second habit and the second thing I need to do is take massive 
action. This means not overthinking things, not over planning things, but going out there, taking action and executing on things that are going to move you closer to your goal. And for me, that means I got to go out there and I got to find a company that lets me sell pest control. That's the, the first step. I not overthink it, not over, you know, analyze it, but just go out there and, and get started. And so that's exactly what I did. I went out there and I just started approaching these companies. I would walk into their office and I'd say, hey, are you hiring for this? And some people are like, you're crazy. We don't do that. Uh, actually, that's what most people said. Most people said, you're crazy. Why would we do that? We don't do door knocking. That's crazy. I didn't have a playbook for exactly what I should do going out there to, to get a job doing this. I just literally started walking into businesses and asking them. I started call, picking up the phone and calling businesses until finally one of them said yes. Should I be ready to yeah, Zoom I'll, right after? I'll, no, I'll jump on a call with him right now. Um, I'll, yeah, and then I'll just uh, I'll call you right back. Perfect. Sounds good. Thank you. Uh, I'm really excited right now. I finally got somebody to say yes. And that was it. It was literally an idea in my head where I was like, I want to go do this. And then after taking a little bit of massive action and after a couple hours of work, suddenly I had this job where I was able to go out and sell pest control. It was really, really easy. It did not take that much work, but it did take me taking massive action. And most people wouldn't have done that. Most people would have sat and been like, I should do this. I'm going to think about it. I'm going to talk about it. I'm going to do research. I'm going to look on look online and see what people are talking about don't do that just go just go do it just go take massive action you don't know if it's gonna work you don't know if you're gonna fail you don't even know if this is possible the way that you find that out the easiest way is just go do it and figure out if it is possible and figure out if somebody will actually hire you you have nothing to worry about if no one will actually hire you and nobody actually does that so just Go do it. The third habit that helped me make a million dollars in a year and a half was educating myself. And I swear, if you turn off the video at this point, I literally, you are hopeless. I don't know what to tell you because this is the most ignored part. This is the part where people are like, they just zone out. They're like, oh, educate myself. I heard that it, they heard it all through middle school. They heard it all through high school. They learned a lot of things that weren't important that everyone told them you need to educate yourself. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about school. I'm talking about educating yourself and equipping yourself to succeed at the things that you're trying, okay? There's a lot of really awesome, amazing, insightful knowledge out there that will help you succeed, that successful people utilize like tools in their tool belt to succeed over and over and over again. And if you don't know those no that knowledge, you are putting yourself at a disadvantage. And if you do know that knowledge, you are giving yourself a massive unfair advantage versus everyone else because it is like ridiculously overpowered. One of the ways that I would educate myself is I would listen to audiobooks every Every single day I would wake up in the morning first thing I'd do is I'd eat cereal second thing I'd do is I'd go work out and I'd listen to an audiobook these audiobooks are massive shortcuts because you have people that have gone and done what you want to do they have learned lessons over decades or over lifetimes and they're passing th those lessons on to you so you don't have to spend a lifetime learning those same lessons and it will give you a massive leg up I cannot overemphasize how many books I've listened to that have severely severely helped me accomplish my goals I don't even know if I'm saying that right, but they have ridiculously helped me, give, made me overpowered when it came to accomplishing what I wanted to accomplish. Do not sleep on these things, okay? Which this leads to the next point, which is to do hard things. Do the things that scare you. Do the things that terrify you. Do the things that take you out of your comfort zone because those are the things that are gonna allow you to grow and to become stronger. Often the best rewards in life are hiding at the end of these paths that we're too afraid to go down. I was terrified when I started my journey to a million and I almost didn't do it because I was so afraid of failing in front of everyone. I didn't have a plan. I didn't know what I was doing. And I was just afraid, like, how, I've never made a million dollars. How am I gonna actually do this? But I tried not to overthink it and I just did it. I just got started. I made a video, I held myself accountable and I said, you know what, I'm gonna figure this out as I go. I'm gonna do it and even if I fail and I suck and I'm horrible at this, at least I will become better throughout this process. And for me doing this pest control strategy, the next step for me was to actually go out and knock these doors and face that rejection. And for me, if, again, for this, I was terrified. I had never done door knocking and this sounded 
horrible to go to people's houses. It's like so uncomfortable, knock on the door, try to sell them something that they don't want and get rejected over and over and over and over again. See, the fact that it was hard for me to do and it was scary for me to do means that it's just as hard and scary for everyone else to do. The top people in sales or investing or whatever field you're in aren't automatically born legends. They were just as terrified and bad at it as you are when they first started. My, my son-in-law does pest control with me takes care of our house. Uh, we have someone that does our pest control, but I thank you for stopping by. Yeah, I'm working, buddy. Oh, okay. You work from home? Yeah. That's awesome. What do you do? Yeah. I'm not going to do that. Good uh, oh, okay. Thank you, buddy. They were forged into legends over time through practice, patience, and facing their fears. And that brings me to the next habit, which is consistency and compounding. If I take these habits of listening to books, maybe listening to podcasts on pest control, going out there, knocking doors, and doing it day after day, over and over and over again, my efforts and knowledge are going to compound over time, and I won't just become a little bit better, but I will become extraordinarily better at this entire process. Compounding magical. Einstein called it the eighth wonder of the world, and it can take you with no ability, no skill set, and just who absolutely just is horrible at, you know, said thing, and turn you into an absolute legend. All it takes is consistency and practice over time. Which leads me to the next habit, which is to embrace failure and choose to learn from it. Throughout my journey, I failed a lot. There were a lot of experiments I tried. There were a lot of side hustles I tried that absolutely bombed, and I definitely did not make money from the these things but I did learn from those things. I did become better from those things. I chose to take those experiences and learn from them so that I could become better in the future. And after my first day of door knocking, I knocked over 70 doors and didn't end up making a single sale. And that's okay because I was significantly better at the process by door 70 because I had failed all those times before that. Taylor, when he first started, went three days in a row without making a single sale. And on the fourth day, he actually made his first sale. And from there, he went on to continue and proving until he was eventually the number one salesperson at his entire company. He did that by embracing failure and becoming stronger through it. So your first day you got how many? Zero. It took me like three, I, I think I got zero like three days in a row. Got it. And then your fourth day you finally got a sale? I, yeah, I think I got one or two my fourth day. I can't remember. And then from there, I, I was just constantly selling. And your first like year doing it, how much did you make? I made almost a hundred thousand dollars. Dang! And how many months out of the year was that? That was uh, May first through the end of August, so I think it's four months. Taylor said that at the height of his door knocking, he would make two hundred thousand dollars between May and August. And Ethan said the top sellers at his company will make anywhere from two hundred fifty thousand dollars to over five hundred thousand dollars just door knocking from May to August. And the amount of money that they make has a direct tie to the amount of failure that they've chosen to face. And all of this leads to the final habit, which is to put your money to work for you. And this is so simple. Yet ninety nine percent of people are not taught this in school. During my journey to a million, I made a lot of money doing side hustles, but I knew I wouldn't have a chance to hit my million dollar goal if I didn't put that money to work for me. Your money is like a little robot you can put to work for you, and it'll go out there and it'll make little baby monies for you. The more money that you have working for you, the more money that you can make. And if I had decided to do this experiment all summer long, I wouldn't have just taken the money that I made and put it in my bank and then just spent it on you know, like a boat or something. I would have put this money to work for me so that I didn't have to continue doing door knocking for the rest of my life, which is exactly what I did during my journey. I took my money and I put it to work investing. And I had some insane gains where I invested $760 and it turned into 150,000, or I invested $3,000 and it turned into 600,000. Even in the bear market, I have my money working for me. It's not making the crazy insane gains that maybe it was 12 months ago, but it's still making moderate returns. Just this week, I pulled in around $1,200 from moderately low risk strategies. The big takeaway isn't how you go and put your money to work. The big takeaway is that most people just think money is for spending. They think that, you know, that you make money from your job so you can go buy a TV or you can go buy a vacation or you can go buy a boat. But wealthy people or financially educated people don't think like this. They think you make money from your job so you can take that money and put it to work for you. And then the money that your money produces, that's the money that you spend. That's just one little step in the middle, but it 
it makes a massive difference because instead of using your time to make money, you're using your money to make money and you can continue to grow that wealth to the point that you never have to work a job again. And that's it. That's all seven habits. Please, please, please take these habits, make them an everyday part of your life. All of this is a lot simpler than most people want to believe, but it's also a lot harder than most people are willing to work. And you have to balance those two. It is simple, but it is also hard. Put in the hard work embrace the simplicity put those things together and you've got serendipity that just kind of rhymed that's the only reason i said that i don't even know what i was going to say at the end of that but the whole point is please just kind of take these to heart learn these lessons learn these habits actually utilize them and please just change your life anyway one last thing the early on in my channel i used to do this series where i like would send uh subscribers like random cool things i did one video about it and i never did a second one about it but i ordered a, a second like portrait for somebody that's literally just been sitting in my closet for like forever and I, I want to get it to the person that it belongs to but I kind of forget who this person is so if you know who this person is or this is you um please like comment and can you guys just upvote it I have literally no idea who this is again it's just been so long that I lost the notes I had but this is one of my subscribers this is somebody I don't I don't know who this guy is but uh I have this amazing portrait of you that I made and I would love to give it to you um, because you're a subscriber and you're amazing. And I feel like if you're a subscriber of this channel, then you're just basically, you're basically this, this is you, you're incredible. And you should have an amazing, beautiful portrait of yourself on your wall because you're, you're a genius. <laughs> you are a genius. Anyways, thanks for watching and I'll see you next week.